Talking Pot Coins. Today is Sunday, 5 April 2015. We are currently on block 71, 75, 15 of the pot chain. Here's what's been going on this week. The community transition has been hitting a few speed bumps. So far, it seems like a lot of confusion about who is responsible for what. The mobile wallet, wallet.potcoin.com, is still down. According to Red Rhino 007, Smokemon is still in charge of it. Smokemon has commented that he is aware and that an anonymous programmer, the Stig, is working on it. But it's been over two weeks and still no results. The Pot Chain Explorer is also still down. And supposedly the same anonymous programmer is working on that one too. A lot of people are rightfully upset that they can't access their pot coins. A few people are under the impression that the community transition was an excuse for an escape plan for the original team. That they bailed on a sinking ship. I'm not saying that this is or isn't the case, but it is possible. If this is not true, then the original team has been dropping the ball on resolving issues. Working on improvements or new projects should always take a back seat to fixing problems. When everything is working as it should, then you can try to improve. If it is the case that the original team is bailing, this might actually be a good way to go about it. If they've lost faith or just lost motivation for Potcoin, then trying to give admin and developer rights to the community is better than just going offline like most failed altcoins have done. At least this way there's still a chance. There are still motivated members of the community working on making Potcoin better. I don't know what's actually going on, but either way this is not necessarily the end of Potcoin. We're at a critical point here, especially in this month with 420 closing in, at a time when anything pot related gets more attention, it seems like this is turning into the make or break moment. If Potcoin is going to fail, this would be a good time to do it. If the community transition actually takes off and responsibility is properly delegated, then we'll be at the next level and the coin won't need to rely on the original team anymore, although I do still hope they stick around. On a positive note, Potcoiner420 has set up a Potcoin Lottery. Go to potcoinlotto.com for your chance to win a few thousand Potcoins. The first jackpot is 5,000 Potcoins and a ticket is only 10 cents worth of Potcoins, Bitcoins, Litecoins, or a few others thanks to coinpayments.net. You can get a ticket with any of those currencies, but the payout is in Potcoin. If no one wins, the jackpot rolls over. And it's as fair as the UK National Lottery because that's where the winning number comes from. The next drawing will be held on Saturday the 12th. The site's profits will be split into website hosting, the Dripping Pot Coins faucet, and partly to increase the next week's jackpot. You can buy up to 10 numbers each week. I got a few to try it out. The whole process from registering on the site to buying the numbers took about 5 minutes. The payment went through coinpayments.net and it took just under 10 minutes to process. Overall, another easy experience using Potcoins. Even with all the problems that Potcoin is having, all you have to do is use it to see that it works. Unless you're trying to use it from the mobile wallet. Pot bars are coming. Colorado State Representative Jonathan Singer has come out in favor of pot bars. In a recent interview, he said, As marijuana becomes more commonplace, we are going to have to find ways for people to consume it legally outside their homes in cannabis clubs that would work similar to bars. People are going to create their own public consumption spots, so I believe it's safer to create some rules for that type of consumption, just as we have done with alcohol. The Cannabis, a pot-related news aggregate, is conducting a poll to see what its readers think about cannabis clubs. The results are as expected. Out of the people that read pot-related articles, 83% of respondents are in favor. Yes, this is a biased sample, and I'm actually surprised that it was only 83% considering the bias of the sample.
The U.S. got another shitty prank pulled on it by the president. Last year, it was Obamacare turning people that don't believe into the fraudulent health care system into criminals. And this year followed a similar theme of turning normal people into criminals. The, ex the executive order signed on April Fool's Day is a vaguely worded bunch of bullshit and nonsense titled Blocking the Property of Certain Persons Engaging in Significant Malicious Cyber-Enabled Activities. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. And that's the beauty of it. It can be interpreted in any way the government wants in order to screw over anyone they want and cuts out that tricky step involving due process. Many people's first impression is that this was aimed at supporters of whistleblowing hero Edward Snowden. A few Redditors have doxxed themselves, giving up their real name, location, and even phone number along with a confession that they sent Snowden some Bitcoin. Since the order was signed, about 1,000 Bitcoin donations have been sent to Snowden so far, totaling over 46,000 Federal Reserve notes worth. That's it for this edition of Mad Potcoins. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs>